Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, as you can see, we've got the uh, 750S Rad um, to play with. And what I'm going to be doing, as the title of the video obviously suggests, is I'm going to be having a look at the Takiko six pot calipers on the front of this bike. Now, the, uh, the bike is due um, a brake fluid change anyway, so I thought while I'm at it, I might as well just uh, give, the, give the calipers a good once over. Now, um, as you will have no doubt heard across the internet, everybody slates them, says that they're terrible and they should be junked in, uh, in favour of missing four pots off of various machines such as Triumphs. Uh, the Triumph there has got one. Um, uh, you, you know, the Nissan four pots, they're available on all sorts of bikes, Bandit 1200s, um, uh, various Hondas. Um, but for this bike, I prefer to keep it factory. Um, and what I'm going to do is rebuild them. Now, um, the problem that a lot of people have with them is that they corrode quite easily, the, f the seals swell up, grip the pistons tight, the pistons then seize, and you lose a lot of feel and ultimately any braking effort whatsoever. So um, a lot of people would rather just replace them and not have to deal with the headache of servicing them. Now I'm on the, uh, the other side of the fence whereby I prefer to actually service my brakes quite regularly and um, I don't have any drama with these brakes. I think they're perfectly adequate for hauling up a 90 sports bike you know, at or around the 120, 130 horsepower mark. Um, these these brakes are also fitted to the ZX9R, um, which uh, which obviously I'm doing a project on at the moment, so feel free to go and look at it. And those brakes will be going back on that as well, so I'm not going to replace them either. Anyway, um, I've waffled on enough. Let's um, let's delve into getting these uh, these calipers off the bike and uh, giving them a once over. <laughs> Right then, before I uh, actually remove the calipers from the bike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove all the brake fluid, or as much of the brake fluid uh, as I can from the reservoir, prior to cracking the lines off. Now the reason for that is obviously brake fluid goes everywhere. It is corrosive and it will damage paint, and I'd obviously so that's the reason that I don't want it everywhere. So I'm going to remove as much of, I, um, of it as I can from the reservoir before we uh, disconnect the lines, and then the amount that comes out of the lines will be, uh, you know, it will be minimal. So, to that end, what I'm going to do, <coughs> what I'm going to do is wrap a bit of paper towel around the front brake master cylinder and its reservoir prior to taking the cap off. That way, if I do drip any, it's it's going to be caught by the towel. Now, what you'll notice here, here let me grab it out of my pocket is that there's a component being removed. Now this little clip here sits on there and prevents the cap from being removed. And it's held in place by a little screw and a tiny little uh, nut. Now these nuts, unfortunately, what they like to do is just turn inside here. Um, it, it doesn't take much at all to, uh, for, the, for the little, the, the little moldings inside this plastic section here, the, uh, the nut should be held captive inside there, but it doesn't take much. It only has to stick slightly and the nut will just rotate. So I had to mess around to get it off um, and I, I wasn't going to film that, it was, it was ridiculous. So um, I'll, I'll sort that out later, um, it's easily recovered. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're now in a position where we can remove the cap. So if I take the cap off now, inside we'll have a couple of little spacers and some uh, some rubber gaskets and stuff. So there's the there's the cap. Now inside there, that um, may well be brake fluid, but it may also well be um, water, which is uh, in the atmosphere. Because as you're all no doubt aware, brake fluid is hygroscopic and will absorb moisture from the atmosphere 
at will. Um, hence the reason why the recommendation is that brake fluid is changed every two years. Now if you look inside there, that is pretty stinking. Um, it has been two years since I last did it, so it's due anyway. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, as you can see, if you leave it, it ends up being absolutely buggy. I have seen some absolutely disgusting brake fluid before now that's got the consistency and viscosity of orange juice. And I'm talking about the orange juice with the bits in, not, not the normal stuff. So pay attention to this guys, it's your brakes at the end of the day and it may well save your life. Right, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna grab my, um, I'm gonna grab a syringe and we're gonna suck all of that out of there and I'm gonna stick it into my little jar with dirty brake fluid written on it. So I'll grab all the stuff I need and then we'll come back. So what I'm, uh, what I'm gonna use really is one of these. It's just a little syringe, you get them with your, your Calpol if you've got kids, you, you, you can get them all over the place. Just a little five mil syringe. You can get them in different sizes. Just, I've only got five mil ones um, available right now. I probably should get myself some bigger ones. It'd probably be uh, easier because if I had a 10 or a 15 mil one, I'd probably be able to suck all this out in one go. So what I've done, another bit of paper there. Simply stick the syringe into the fluid and just suck it all out. Bring it over to the jar. in and repeat until the reservoir is empty. Now uh, another bonus that you get by emptying the reservoir in this manner is that um, it gives you the opportunity to clear the bottom of it out of any sediment. Um, I know uh, quite a lot of people out there and I get it quite common Quite commonly, uh, people will say, oh, you don't need to empty that, just put fresh fluid in and draw it through and you're good to go. Well, yeah, they're not wrong, but they're not giving themselves the opportunity to clean out any sediment in the bottom of the reservoir. So this is my method. Um, obviously, others will have their methods and that's fine. Um, I don't expect everybody to blindly follow me without questioning anything. Um, I'm, as I said, not a vehicle mechanic. I'm just a knowledgeable enthusiast. and we're pretty much there yeah i reckon one more one more should do it as i said with a bigger syringe this would be uh, a lot quicker right there we are right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some uh, more towel i'm going to clean out the uh, the bottom of the reservoir but um, there was a bit of rubbish in the bottom of this jar, to be fair, but that's it's horrible brake fluid, that, uh, anyway. So, let's get this in there. Give it a good clean out. Obviously, what we can actually do, we could actually remove this from the bike because once all the fluid's completely out of all the lines, the uh, this uh, non-pressured line here that goes down to the master cylinder, it's only held in with a couple of little hose clips, um, and the reservoir itself is bolted to the bars with um, just one little ten mil bolt. Can undo all of that, <coughs> take it off off the bike, give it a good clean on the bench, you know, even put it through an ultrasonic cleaner if, if you so wish. Right, well. There we go, I'm, uh, I'm content that that is nice and clean now. There's no rubbish in the bottom of there. Um, and yeah, we can move on. So what we need to do now is basically just uh, crack the lines off. Now, the, uh, there is fluid in the line, so that's all we need to be mindful of now, but at least we won't have all the fluid from the reservoir now trying to rush out um, at the calipers. So what we'll do, we'll get down on the floor, start getting some calipers off. Okay, so here we are now down at the uh, down at the caliper end. What we need to do in order to get the caliper off the bike is we need to crack the uh, the banjo bolt uh, for the brake line, which is just here, and then these two caliper bolts I hold it to the fork leg, uh, and then the caliper will uh, will come off quite quite easily. Um, one thing to point out um, before we do that though is the these bolts here and the two on the back here that hold the spring plate on. Um, you, you can crack those um, 
while they're on a the bike if you wish. What we're going to do is we are going to split these two caliper halves um, apart and uh, if you haven't got the benefit of a vice um, you may find it difficult to get these off with the caliper off the bike so probably um, worthwhile doing if you don't have the benefit of a vice. I do so I should be okay. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to crack the banjo bolt like so. Now what we will get out of here is a bit of fluid that is uh, left in the line. What I did was um, off camera is I just took the uh, liberty of just cracking off the bleed nipple and pumping any fluid through using the brake lever just to get any um, out uh, just with a bit of hose in a jar. Um, not a lot came out but then I wasn't expecting a great deal to be perfectly honest and what we're going to do is just catch any spilt fluid here with my tissue just to make sure we don't get it anywhere it shouldn't be. Got a bit more out of here actually than, um, than I was anticipating. Just if you do spill any, just wipe it up really quickly and you should be fine. Uh, if necessary, just give it a little mop down with with uh, with any with some fresh water and you should uh, you should be good. To be fair, um, when I uh, when I cracked the bleed nipple here, I got very little out um, of this side, but I did get quite a bit out of the other side. So okay, I'm getting a little bit out still, but the flow the flow is pretty much stopped now. All right, let's take the banjo out. The banjo bolt, sorry. And there should be two washers as well. Let me just catch any brake fluid. And there we are. Right. So there we go. There's the banjo bolt. These are stainless steel ones. And a couple of copper washers. And there is the hose. Right, what I'm going to do, just to be on the safe side, is I'm going to wrap a little bit of tissue around it, but I'll put it through the banjo. Like so. And that way, it shouldn't really, shouldn't really drip. So we can leave it like like that now and we'll be able to see if it gets sodden with brake fluid because obviously it'll it'll go like that right with the copper washers um as a general rule you can replace them uh, on reinstallation but um it's not 100 percent necessary you can actually reuse them believe it or not although a lot of people will say otherwise what you can do um, is you can anneal them and by annealing what i mean is hit them with a blow torch until they glow cherry red and then allow them to cool naturally don't quench them and then they will be lovely and soft and you'll be able to use them again um the replacement of copper washers is merely a financial um a financial one i mean they're not expensive but if you don't have any you can do that and they will work perfectly well right what we're going to do next get the caliper bolts out and then remove the caliper from the bike Okay, the uh, the bolts holding the caliper onto the fork leg are 12 mil, and I'm going to use a little uh, breaker bar just to give me a bit of purchase because they'll be quite tight. There's one, and there's two, and we can just run those out. Right now, there's nothing holding the uh, caliper on other than these two bolts. So once we get these off, if we give the caliper a little twist ever so slightly we should just be able to push the pistons back in enough to be able to get it over any lip that's on the disc as it happens these discs are pretty good condition there's no lip in um, but if there is a lip on the disc it'll it may, can make it a bit difficult to get the um, caliper over that lip uh, but obviously bearing in mind that if you do push the pistons back in you may get a little bit of fluid run out of here um, as you uh, as you do so so there we go right let me just get the caliper off of the disc 
and there we are. Okay, as you can see, running a little bit of running a little bit of fluid. So I'll get my tissue again, give it a little wipe up. So that is the caliper now removed from the bike. These uh, these pads are actually in very very good order. You can see there's uh, hardly any. Uh, it looks like hardly any of it's been used. As it goes, I've got a new pet to go in anyway, so I'm not going to lose sleep about it. But yeah, um, what we're going to do now, obviously, put these on the uh, bench and work on them. But first, I do need to get the one off on the other side. So what I'll do, get the caliper on the other side off, and then we we'll get on the bench, start pulling them apart. Okay. Here we are. Uh, as you can see, both calipers are now on the bench. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through rebuilding one of them. So I'll put that one to one side for now, and I'll do that one later. And we'll just concentrate on this uh, this bad boy. So this is the one from the right hand side. Now, what we need to do in order to pull it apart, I need to take the uh, the spring plate off the top, uh, bleed nipple out, and split the uh, split the caliper with these four bolts here. What we'll do first, we'll take the spring plate off, uh, and underneath the spring plate there is a little pin with an R-clip in it, which is what retains the pads in place. Now, those little uh, those little pins do like to seize in place in these um, in these calipers and cause a pain. Um, we'll see how we get on anyway. Um, hopefully, it'll uh, it'll play the game. These two little bolts here are just um, three mil three mil Allen, um, so hopefully they'll uh, they'll come out okay. Oh yeah, they're fine. Absolutely beautiful. As I said, I do uh, routinely look after these brakes. Um, go back to what I was saying earlier on about these uh, these six pots. One of the problems with them is that um, Takiko themselves, when they manufacture these, they anodize the castings and then cut the uh, cut all the uh, you know cut all the holes for everything um, after the anodizing is done. So then you're left with um, bare aluminium effectively, which then likes to corrode. Hence the reason why it's a good idea to service them regularly. Servicing these regularly, they will last forever. They're, they're you know, they're, they're perfectly fine. Um, here we go, look, there's the uh, pin I was talking about and there's a little, and there is the little arc clip. Now the fact that I was able to turn that round like so is a good sign, which means to me that that's not seized in. A um, little bit of corrosion can set in in here and cause all sorts of havoc and likewise in there. But if I'm able to turn it like you can see there, like you can see I can spin it round. If it's doing that, then we're good. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll um, pull the little pin out like that. And then the, there we go, look at that. Look how easy that came out. Um, again, if that's not coming out properly, it could be due to negligence or a little bit of too much time spent not looking after your brakes and prettifying your bike instead okay there's the uh these are the pads these are quite obviously ebc uh sintered ones i wasn't sure how how much meat was going to be left on them i, I could have looked but i didn't um but i've got replacement like for like as you can see there they're, they're identical these pads are awesome by the way these brakes work brilliantly with these pads in um so i highly recommend them i'll stick a link in there in the description if you want to go and grab a set um to be honest, um, I could just put these back in, they'd be perfectly fine, but as I've got a set anyway, why not, you know? Um, okay, now, here we can see what I meant about the uh, castings being machined after the anodizing is done. You can see this is bare aluminium here, uh, and it's likewise inside inside the pots for each of the pistons. Um, they're the same, so that's where, uh, if water gets in, um, corrosion can set in. Obviously, if corrosion sets in, it can swell uh, you know, it gets in behind the seals, swells them out, and then causes the pistons to stick. Um, and that's where people run into problems with these brakes. Um, but like I said, if you maintain them regularly, you won't have a problem with them at all. Um, I certainly haven't, and that's because I, reg I reg regularly maintain them. Right, the other thing I'm going to take off right now is the bleed nipple. Now, all of these parts that I've removed here, with the exception of the plate, all of these little bolts, R clips and pins and stuff are all included in the rebuild kit that I've got here. We'll go through the rebuild kit in a moment once we've got the caliper apart and cleaned up. But I've even got new bolts um, 
for the for the two halves of a caliper. Now, as I said earlier on, um, if you don't have the luxury of a uh, vice, then it's wise to try and undo these while they're on the bike. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try and undo them without my vice. Um, you never know; they might uh, they might be okay. Um, I did have them out apart last time I serviced the brakes, so they may well come apart again perfectly well. Uh, they are just six mil Allen, uh, six mil like so. And um, if you've got a set like this, it will make your life easier because then you, you have the benefit of like a breaker bar instead of just trying to use a set of Allen keys, um, which, you know, you, you may have mixed success with. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try and crack them all off like so. There we are. That's the first one. And next one in there we go yeah that went well as well yeah they're all coming off absolutely fine these yeah beautiful Right, so what I need to do now is just pull all those bolts out and then I'll bring you back. And there we are, that is the four bolts removed from the caliper halves. And as you can see, it practically falls apart. Now, um, let me grab my screwdriver from over there. Just here, you can see we've got a seal there and another one there. And that's basically, see, these are the passages to allow the fluid to flow between the two halves of the caliper. And those seals obviously just seal it. Okay, now, as you can see inside, they're pretty dirty. They're not terrible uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but they are pretty dirty. Obviously, they've had a couple of years of uh, use, and um, there's a bit of brake dust built up in there, but, it, you know, it's nothing too drastic. There's no real corrosion to speak of. Um, as I've said in the past, this bike does not get... I, I cherish this bike quite a lot, and I don't ride it in the rain, even if it was remotely... A remote outside chance that there was going to be any rain, I wouldn't get this one out. Uh, I'd take my VFR or something instead because that tends to be my workhorse. Okay, so what we need to do now is clean these up, but first we need to remove the pistons. Now, um, talking about the pistons, in my rebuild kit, all I've bought is a seal and bolt kit. I haven't bought new pistons because I didn't anticipate there being any issues with these because, as I've said, I, I, I know the condition of these pistons. Um, due to the fact that I take them out fairly frequently and clean them. So I know that they're in uh, decent condition. So what I'm going to do is remove the pistons first and then we'll um, get these caliper halves into the parts washer, give them a good scrub down and then we'll look at the reassembly. Right then, piston removal. Um, I've seen all sorts of uh, little hints and tips on removing pistons from, uh, from the calipers. You know, people talking about popping them out while they're uh, while they're on the bike you can use compressed air you can use compressed air that's that's perfectly uh, perfectly good idea what i prefer to use is a piston um brake piston removal tool and all it is it's got a couple of little pads at the end with which with grippy bits and it's like a set of pliers you literally put them in open them up and then you can twist them out um it's got a, like a little uh a little wing nut as well so you can um tighten them up and it holds them tight without um, without risk slipping and all sorts of things. And these are cheap as well, these are so cheap. Again, I, well, I'll stick a link uh, in the description so you can go and have a look at them if you want. I mean, I think this is about, I don't even, I don't even think these cost 15 quid. Um, so yeah, they're well worth having in your toolkit for, for jobs such as this. And it's simply a case of, uh, let's undo this. Yeah, simply a case of putting them in like so, and then, squeezing tight and then as you can see the piston is uh, the piston is turning nice and freely and then simply just work it out um, obviously there is a uh, fluid in here so be mindful of that um, yeah just keep working it backwards and forwards until they pop out now as you can see as I was mentioning a minute ago my pistons are nice and clean and this this grime here will come off with a, with a, with a wipe down. Um, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's all there is to it. So we simply just rock them backwards and forwards till such time as they uh, as they come out. So what I'll do, I'll get all six of them out, and then I'll bring you back in. We'll give them a clean up, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll look at. Um, all the various parts of the uh, the, piss, the the calipers, clean them up, and then we'll uh, we'll get the seals sorted out. Okay, as you can see, all the pistons are out. They all came out pretty easy. Part one was one was a little bit more difficult than the other than the other five, but it didn't put up that much of a fight. It was just a little bit more sticky than the others, um, but they all came out okay in the end. Um, now, inside here, all we've got is we've got the seals. So, the one at the bottom, which my fingernail is now touching now, is the oil seal, or the fluid seal, should I say, and this one here is a dust seal. And as you can see, it's been doing a pretty good job of keeping the rubbish away from the oil seal. That's what its job is. It's just keep, if, if that crap was allowed to get into the oil seal, it would breach and allow fluid out, and then you, you potentially have a loss of, um, brake function. So what we need to do is we need to remove all of these seals and I like to do that with a little scriber. Now you can get little like dentist picks and all sorts of stuff to do this with and they all work pretty well. Um, and all you do is basically pry the old seals out like so. Now now that they're out, you can see the difference between the two. This one is quite thick, and this one is quite thin. And there's no real difference to them other than the physical size. So this is the oil seal, and this is the dust seal. So when we uh, fit the new ones out of the kit, we need to get them the right way around, otherwise we'll have problems. So what I need to do now is just remove all the others, now bear in mind obviously there is three oil seals and three dust seals in each caliper. The oil seals are put up a bit more of a fight than the dust seals do. Another thing worth noting uh, with these calipers is the pistons are actually different sizes. These two are the same, these two are 27mm pistons and that one I think is 24 I think these, 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 are t these both are the same at 27, I'm pretty sure that's 24, might be 23 uh, from memory, but um, yeah, it's uh, worth bearing that in mind again, because obviously there'll be different size seals within the kit for each of the pots. And this one doesn't want to come out, come on, there we go. And pop that sucker out, and there we are, now the... But give the um, basically the the, the 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 slots where the, the seals fit. Just give them a little inspection because if you're going to have issues, that'll be where you have the issues. Because if water gets in behind it, it corrodes the aluminium and then causes the, the basically pushes the seal out, which then it can impinge upon the piston and, and cause stiction. So give them a good look. If there's any uh, any rubbish in there or any corrosion, it needs cleaning out before you go any further, in, um, before you go rebuilding it, certainly. Uh, as you can see in there, there's a bit of rubbish in there, look. That was in the brake fluid. And like I said, I, I change this fluid fairly regularly. So um, if you don't, this is what's ended up in your brakes. So it's uh, it's well worth, uh, well worth a check every now and again. Okay, what I need to do is obviously remove the seals out of this one, and um, then we're into the cleaning the cleaning part of the job. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fire these through my uh, parts washer, and they'll come back. Abs they'll be absolutely gleaming. There'll be there'll be no brake dust anywhere on these whatsoever. All the old fluid will be out. Um, all this gunk and rubbish will be out, and they'll look that well. They'll, they'll look pretty much brand new, and then they'll be ready to assemble. So what I'm going to do, get all these seals out. I'm going to strip the other caliper down uh, because obviously I don't want to go to the parts washer twice. I'll I'll um, do it in one go. And then uh, once I've got them all nice and clean, I'll bring you back and we can look at the actual reassembly. So I'll uh, see you in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna go and get cleaning.
Okay, so um, I've removed all the pistons from oh, from each half of the caliper, and they've been in the uh, they've been in the parts washer. They've had a good scrub, and um, yeah, they're all nice and clean now. So now we're ready to put them back together. So um, obviously, I showed you the pads a minute ago. EBC double H sintered. That's why I all, always do. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, obviously, there wasn't actually anything wrong with these, but I had a set anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so. Um, as far as the rebuild kit comes, um, go, well, as far as the rebuild kit goes, uh, these are available on eBay. I'll stick a link in the bottom. Uh, it comes with brand new um, caliper jointing bolts uh, and the little ones for the for the spring plate. Uh, these are stainless steel. Um, there's two little bags of seals. Uh, as I said earlier on, you've got uh, the 27 and the 24, 20, 27 and 24. In fact. Let's get a caliper out and measure it because I'm pretty sure it's yeah 24 and 27 yeah so 27 and 24 um, yeah you've got a set of seals for the 27s um, obviously there's two four six eight sets in there and then you've got for the 24s you've got two and four so four sets of seals in that bag and then you've got all the little bits of hardware um, new brake nipples new pad pins, new R clips, new um, seals for the joints um, between the two caliper halves uh, and new um, uh, copper washers again uh, like we talked about earlier on get new copper washers in the uh, in the kit okay in this little sachet there's red rubber grease um, for the seals helps in um, getting the pistons in and uh, yeah, yeah, it keeps it keeps the rubber nice as well. Um, I don't tend to use that stuff. I've got I've actually got a tin of it which I've had for absolutely donkeys, and this stuff lasts years. I, you know, I probably never need to buy anymore. Um, anyway, so moving on, what we need to do is uh, refit all the pistons back into into the caliper. Now, um, I've given them a good clean. Um, there is a little bit of pitting on a couple of them, and I can feel that with my finger. But that um, that pit in there does actually sit outside the uh, outside of the seal anyway, so it won't cause us any dramas. Um, but I reckon the next time I come to rebuild these, I'll probably replace all the pistons as well. Uh, I think I did actually replace them last time I did this. I can't remember. It's been a it's been a while, but um, yeah, it, I'll replace them next time. You know, it's uh, it's not a biggie. Obviously, they're um, they're not cheap, uh, especially if you buy the stainless steel ones. Um, but uh, yeah, if you need them, you need them. It's one of them things. Now, obviously, these um, these are the old these are the old uh, bolts. Um, there's nothing wrong with them; they're fine. But like I said, I've got brand new ones. Uh, I'll probably keep them, clean them up, and use them for something else. Um, what you will notice on these is there's copper slip on them. Now, with the brakes, um, look around the internet. You you have two camps of people. You have the camp of people that smear the pads in copper slip like they're butter in a biscuit as um, as Matt at the workshop once referred to, which was quite funny. Um, and the other people, the other camp that don't put any um, grease on whatsoever. And as you can see, I haven't put any grease on whatsoever. Now these brakes were absolutely fine. I've had no squealing or anything. So it's not necessary. This is an anti, this is the sh this shim here is an anti squeal shim. That's what it's for. Um, and the back of the color, uh, the back of the pad is actually copper. Um, anyway, as you can, as you can see, you know, it's, um, I'm not going to get drawn into an argument about it. I, I don't put copper slip on the back of my pads, never have done, never needed to, never had a problem with my brakes, never had squealing brakes. Um, if your brakes are squealing, the chances are there's probably a issue that's causing that to happen, i.e. some stiction of some kind or whatever. Uh, but anyway, we're digressing. The, uh, the jointed bolts, I do put a little bit on because these are stainless steel bolts going into an aluminium um, uh, caliper half and um, the alloy does like to rot, uh, does like to corrode around uh, stainless steel a little bit, especially if it gets a little bit of water in there um, to act as uh, as an electrolyte. So um, I do like to put a tiny, only a little bit. It doesn't have to be, you know. Again, don't go crazy. Just a little smear, uh, and that'll just help to get them out next time you uh, you come to strip them. Um, uh, and yeah, and you shouldn't have any dramas. Right then. Anyway, I've uh, blathered on enough. Let's get the pistons fitted back into these caliper halves. Okay, so what we need to do, um, 
before you can actually put the halves together, you need to get the pistons in, otherwise you won't be able to do it. So all of this good stuff in this bag, we can ignore for now. That's uh, the bolts kit, uh, we can ignore for now. All we are interested in at the moment is the seals themselves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, a seal out of the bag. So this is the, uh, the 24 mil size. And what we need to do, we need to find an oil seal and a dust seal. As I was talking about earlier on, you can't get them wrong. They're different sizes. And if you look inside the dust seal, I don't know if you can make it out or not. There's like a little, there's like a little ridge. I'm not sure if it's going to show. There's like a little ridge around the inside of the dust seal that isn't on the oil seal. So that's going to go in the, uh, obviously in the small pot on each of the calipers. This oil seal goes at the back, dust seal above it. And you can see, um, in here, the, the gap for the oil seal is thicker than the gap for the dust seal. So, let's get them in. Right, what we need to do is fit the oil seal first, because that's going in at, at the back, effectively. And what we're going to do, just get some uh, red rubber grease. And just give it a nice little liberal coat. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to go crazy, You're just, just a nice little smear. Especially around the inside as well. Um, and then, get the seal fitted into its location in the caliper can be a little bit awkward may need a little screwdriver just to assist um, obviously if you're going to use a screwdriver though just make sure that you don't scratch anything Yeah, just get it, get it in there. Obviously, when they're slimy, they're a bit, a bit awkward. Right there, you go. That's the, that's the first one in. Don't worry about the red rubber grease. We'll give it a little wipe down afterwards. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a, another little coat around the inside. And there we go. That's the oil seal fitted. What we need next is the dust seal. Get a little bit of red rubber grease around that. And likewise, we'll fit that one in. And the dust seal popped in nice and easy. Again, another little bit of grease. The grease will just help us get the pistons in. Now, going back to, again, common folklore, um, I see people talking about using brake fluid as a lubricant, which is fine, you know, it works. In fact, I've seen manuals actually say use, uh, use brake fluid as a lubricant to fit the pistons. Um, it, it's going to work as a lubricant, um, absolutely. The only issue I have with it is obviously, if you're using brake fluid, that brake fluid is then going to sit behind the seal um, and potentially attract water. Um, and you can see where I'm going with this. Obviously, if it's attracting water or absorbing water, that water is then going to sit in the recess for the seal and cause your oils a havoc because it'll start to corrode the the, uh, the, the inside of the um, slot for the for the seal. So you see where I'm going with that. Um, that's my theory, um, and oh, well, I'm going to stick with that. That's that's my theory, and that's the why, the reason why I don't. I prefer to use red rubber grease. Um, red rubber grease at the end of the day doesn't attract water. That's my uh, that's my feelings on the matter. Um, so yeah. Um, that's the reason why I don't use brake fluid. Uh, but it, again, if you, if you want to do that with your bike, then by all means, crack on. Okay, so we're going to take the smaller of the uh, of the pistons, and we're simply going to gently fit it back into the caliper. And it's really, really easy, and you can feel it slide in absolutely beautifully. It just it just glided in because it was because it was lubricated, and pop it right back and what I like to do is just pull them out ever so slightly and the reason for that is because I don't like to bottom bottom the pistons out right at the back and um, the reason for that is because when you're trying to bleed them the the, the, the fluid can't get behind the piston because you've bottomed it um, if you understand where I'm coming from so you're trying to bleed it the fluid can't get behind a piston and push it out all it's doing is pushing onto the outsides of the piston. If you leave a little gap, it allows the fluid to get behind and push the piston out. Okay, so that's worth bearing in mind. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crack on um, doing all of the others because they're all done in exactly the same way as that. And then we'll um, bring you back when we're uh, gonna put the 
caliper halves back together. And there we go, that is all 12 pistons refitted uh, back into their respective locations. Right, what we're going to do next is we're going to join the two halves of the uh, calipers together. And for that, we need these little seals just here. Two for that one, two for that one. They are the old ones. Again, a little dab of grease on them. Um, not too much. Just a little dab. Now you'll notice on one of the halves, the half that doesn't have the bleed nipple port and the um, banjo port, they're actually recessed, whereas they're not so on this one. So what we'll do, we will pop the replacement seal on that side. Like so. Same on this colour bar. There. Okay. In fact, let me just a little bit over the top of the rubber grease on that one. Right, there we are. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. Let's get that out of the way. Right, what we need to do now is put the um, two halves of the caliper together and they simply go together like so and then the four bolts go in. Now, as I said before, I am going to lightly copper grease these bolts and I do mean lightly again it's literally just uh, as an anti seize measure each of the threads I'm not going mental because I don't need to and there we are right so we can get this one together And that's simply a case of putting the two halves together, like so. There's no dowels or anything. And then simply drop the bolts into place. Like so. To be fair, there's something about something about having nice, the nice shiny bolts as well that just makes the job feel worthwhile, you know. And all we're doing is just gently tighten them down. Now these bolts are tightened to 23 newton meters, but what I'll do, I will do that once they're back on the bike. I'm not going to do it now. gently nipping them up to touch. Uh, I haven't actually compressed the seals as yet. Again, we'll do that once they're back on the bike. Um, as you can see, there's still a gap there, look. Um, and I could probably nip it up a bit more, but it's just easier to torque them all once they're on the bike. Um, obviously, before we apply any fluid, um, but before we apply any through, fluid through. So yeah, there we go. There's a little bit of copper slip on there, which will just wipe off. Uh, a little bit of red rubber grease as well. Again, that will just wipe off. I'll get a wipe out and we'll clean it off. But that is one um, caliper uh, reassembled. What we do need to do um, is obviously fit the pads, but I'll do that um, at the end. And we've got a brand new bleed nipple also in the kit. And I'll just fit that finger tight. Um, they did give us new dust caps as well. Um, but um, I'll put them on right at the end when uh, when we've um, when we've finished bleeding them up. So that's um, 
ready for the pads and stuff, what I'll do, I'll uh, get this caliper together and then we'll fit the pads and all that sort of stuff um, to both of them. Right, there we are. That is the, uh, the two caliper halves rejoined. Um, what are we going to do uh, now? Get some pads in them. So here's the uh, here's the pads I've bought. EBC. Um, I don't think you can get um, a better brand of brake components, be it discs or pads, um, than EBC. To be honest, I mean, obviously people opt for the OEMs if you if you if that's what you wish to do. Um, but the OEMs are oh, flaming expensive um, for what is sometimes not necessarily a better product. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of market research has gone into BBC's um, kit, and uh, uh, you know I quite like it. And these uh, double H sintered pads are absolutely awesome, in my opinion. I, I, I really highly rate these. Again, I'll leave a link to them in the description, so you can go and have a look if you want to. Anyway, so um, yeah, I've got two sets, um, one for each caliper. So let's get them in. Go. Right, now what we need, we need one of the pad retaining pins and one of the new R clips and then it's a simple case of dropping a pad into position with the other one just like that and then pop in the pin through to retain them both. Then get it in as far as it goes and then you can pop the R pin through. And there we are. That is the, pad, the pads installed, it really is that easy. Um, what we need to do next is fit the spring plate and there should be as you can see a little bit of a gap it each side if there isn't then it's um worth replacing the uh, the, the, the spring plate because otherwise it's not actually doing anything and um, what it's supposed to do is um apply a little bit of pressure to the top of the pads brand new bolts the little the little allen bolts um, out of the uh out of the kits. If I can get it started, come on, get in the right place. There we go. That took a little bit of effort. The other one. Uh, Tighten them up. There is no torque spec for these in the manual, but there is for the caliper half bolts. They're 23 newton meters. Likewise, the, the mounting bolts for the caliper to the forklift, they're also 23. But as I said, we'll tighten those to torque. Um, once it's reinstalled on the bike. Right, I'll um, get this one done. Um, get, get, again, it's exactly the same. Um, and then we're, we're looking at the reinstall. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the caliper fully assembled. Um, all we need to do now is uh, mount it back onto the bike. Now, obviously I need to make sure that the, the pads go either side of the disc. Just like... So, and then simply refit the mounting bolt. Two up to touch. 
Right, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna refit the banjo. Those are the old washers, I don't need those because I've got brand new ones in the kit. One one side of the banjo, the other on the other side of the banjo, and then refit back to the caliper, like so. Right, torque specs. This is really easy. Um, mountain bolts, 23, caliper half bolts, 23, banjo bolt, 23. So there's absolutely no getting it wrong. So let me set it to 23 newton meters. 21, 22, 20. Three. There we go. Lock her off. One. Yep, that was good. That's the mountains. Banjo. That's that done. Then we just got all of these. What I'm gonna do is do the outside ones first and then the inside ones, which as you can see gone nice and loose. And there we are, that's that. Right, all I've got to do now, fit the one on the other side and then we're bleeding. Now what I'm not going to do on this video is I'm not going to go through the rig roll of bleeding brakes. You've seen me do that countless times. Um, so I think what we'll do, we'll wrap it up here because that's the video done. Um, so the uh, Takiko six pots, um, much maligned throughout the world, across the internet. Um, I don't have a drama with them, uh, it regularly serviced maintained like we've just done here i find that they last and work perfectly um this has been on the track and these brakes performed quite well on the track uh, a little bit of blue in on the disc actually as you can see but um there's still a bit of life left in that so we're uh, we're all good um yeah um i'm sure i'll uh, no doubt get some comments about the fact that i should uh, bin these and fit some uh, fit some four pops off something else but um i won't be because i, I like the originality uh, of this Jixa because obviously she's absolutely mint uh, and I want to keep it that way Anyway guys, uh, I'm gonna get on with uh, fitting the caliper on the other side and bleeding these up and I'm gonna let you go So uh, yeah, uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video um, Hit the like button hit the subscribe button all that good stuff, you know all the usual YouTube uh, stuff and um, yeah the um, the links to all the socials the Instagram Facebook and uh, Twitter feeds are all in the uh, in the description below along with uh, links to the tools and the parts and stuff that I've used here thank you very much guys take care and bye bye